This is an imagined week in um, Mr. Wu's, well, I guess it wouldn't be Mr. Wu if I was running a course. But anyhow, uh, uh, an imagined week, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of sales of a quarter store that's situated near the beach. Okay, so what I happen to be selling, these are, um, these are sales of items, because it's near, near the beach, okay, um, is bottles of sunscreen and ice creams. Because, whoops, I can't spell. Because I'm near the beach, right. Good morning. So, this is how um, an imagined week at my corner store progressed, and these were the different kinds of sales that I made. Now, I, regardless of whether I ended up becoming a math teacher or not, there's some clear structure to my sale of sunscreen and my sale of ice creams. And in fact, you can kind of see they must be linked in some way, right? For instance, as I have more sales in sunscreen, right, I also have more sales in ice creams. Like my smallest day, right, for sales of sunscreen, well, obviously there's zero and zero, okay? But here, three, that corresponds to the lowest number of ice creams. And my highest number of sales of sun, bottles of sunscreen also corresponds to my highest number of sales of ice cream. So there's clearly some kind of relationship. So if we call sunscreen S and we call ice creams I, right, how would we express this relationship? Now it's not that hard to work out in this imagined week what kind of relationship we can form. For instance, have a look at all of these sunscreen numbers. What do they all have in common? They are all, yeah, they're all divisible by three. They're all multiples of three, okay. So if I were to take the number of bottles of sunscreen I sold, right, S, and if I were to divide that by three, I would get a number, right? I'd get uh, one, three, four, seven, uh, two, right? So that's the number of bottles of sunscreen divided by three. Now those numbers, they're related to these numbers, right? If I have in my head one, three, four, seven, two, these numbers are also special, right? What kind of numbers are they? No, they are all square numbers, right? So it stands to reason I should like kind of take the square root here. Okay. So if I take the square root of all of these numbers, the square root of i. I'm going to get 2, 4, 5, 8, 3, right? Let's have a look, right? Divide by 3, take the square root. Divide by 3, you get 1, square root is 2. Divide by 3, you get 3, square root is 4. Divide by 3, that's 4, the square root is 5. You can start to see a pattern, right? If I divide this by 3, it's going to be exactly the same thing as if I take the square root and I have to take off 1, right? Because the square root of this number is not exactly the same as this number divided by 3. Okay. But, ta-da! I have a relationship now, right? I can say, come on. I can say, uh, if you like, I could make the subject S. Right? And I could say, well, I can work out how many bottles of sunscreen I ought to expect to sell if I've already got the number of um, ice creams I've sold. Take the square root, take away 1, and then I multiply that number by 3. Okay. So what we have created in here, in here, is really, let's put a bit of extra notation in here, right? It's sunscreen <coughs> as a, bless you, as a function of ice cream. Does that make sense, right? It's sunscreen, I have an expression for that, in terms of ice cream, okay? And I can get a number out, and at least in my imagined way, it is, um, it's accurate, okay? Now, it's all fine. It makes numerical sense. The only problem is, it's ridiculous, right? Because there's no rule, really, that says, oh, you know, people are buying sunscreen. I guess I'd better buy ice creams, right? There's not really a, you know, people people start this, the sales of sunscreen are skyrocketing. Quick, quick, buy ice cream, or vice versa, right? That, that doesn't make sense, okay? Um, as you can see, by the way, I didn't have to make sunscreen a function of ice cream. I could have made, how would I do it if I wanted to make ice cream a function of sunscreen? What would I do here? Add one to I, I add one, right? So that would give me the square root of i being s on 3 plus 1. And then I guess I would square, right? So that would give me this. Okay. So one is the function of the other, one is the function of the other. No big deal, right? It just doesn't make sense with reality, okay? In fact, what's missing from this? is that both of these, they're not 
related to each other, right? they're not related to each other, it's that they're both rising and falling in response to some other information that's not on here, some other piece of data, which next to the beach, you might be able to guess is probably something like Sunshine. Sunshine, weather, temperature, something like that, right? So for instance, if you take your table, and beside here, if you add another column. How did I know that was going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm suspicious. Okay, now, if for instance, I said beside all of these measurements, beside these ones, I have another measurement, right? Let's, for the sake of simplicity, let's call it temperature. Okay? And if I go ahead and I look up the actual, you know, recording of temperature each day, suppose I get something like this. Here we go. Okay. So because I have this extra measurement, Right, this extra metric, if you like, right, for what's actually happening in the situation. Really, as temperature rises, that's what causes both of these to rise. Okay, it's not that sunscreen rising makes more sales of ice cream. Okay, it's that when temperature rises, both of these rise at the same time. Okay, does that make sense? So it's really this which is in control. So even though I could say this and it would be accurate, right, I would get the right numbers out, it actually makes more sense to say I can write sunscreen as a function of temperature and I can write ice creams as a function of temperature. Right? Both of these things actually have a root cause. Right? So we've seen this function notation before, right? You're used to seeing f of x or whatever. Okay? But you can use any letters you like and since my functions actually refer to objects, I might as well name my functions after my objects. Right? What would sunscreen be as a function of temperature? You have a look. Okay. Hmm. For instance, uh, you saw there was division by three happening here, right? Fair enough. Okay. Now when you get one, three, four, seven, two, how do they relate to these numbers? Can you have 0 and 22 and then also It's a good two. question. That's a very good question. We will, we will cover that in a second. I just think that that's probably something realistic. If it's 22 degrees, I don't think yeah, there's going to be a huge number of people, you know. Um, have a look, right? For instance, I can see that these numbers here, right, are exactly, it looks to me, 25 apart here. Right, sorry. Uh, when I divide this by 3, I'm going to get one which is 27 apart. When I divide this by 3, that's going to be 27 apart to this. And when I divide this by 3, it'll be 27 apart. Do you see what's going on here? Okay. So when I divide by 3, that's the same as taking 27 away from this. Yes? Okay. So another way of saying that is you can take the temperature, subtract 27, right? and then if you multiply that by 3, that's how many bottles of sunscreen I've been selling. Yes, good question. We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. You can clearly see the zeros seem to be following a different kind of rule, don't they? Right? They just like they're just doing their own thing. Okay, so we'll we'll come to that in a second. That's sunscreen. Now help me out with ice cream, right? Something has to be squared. The question is what? You remember you told me there was an offset of one? Right? This one up here, right? Yeah, so instead of doing t minus twenty-seven. I, I think I should go t minus 26, right? t minus 26. So for instance, here I will get 2, you square it, you get 4. Here I'm going to get 4, you square it, you get 16. Here I'm going to get, what did I say? Take away 26, you get 5, you square it, you get 25. Okay, so this makes sense. Say that again? Yeah, that's right. So you take this number, as I was saying, and then you square it, which is the equivalent of this square here. Right, you see that? 